Welcome to Welly's World Podcast. I'm your host, Welly Jackson. Mr. Welly Jackson out here. What's it's up? a rainy day in New York City, but that does not stop my shine. Never. I, I got my man in the building with me. Yes. Mr. Alex Quo, what up? What's good with y'all? Mr. Alex Quo's here today. Cold and rainy, but we feeling good. We looking good. You know it how it is. It ain't cold, man. It's, it's, it's a little breezy out there. Because you, you skinny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat something. Be mad, all right. Yo, but, 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 mad, but all right. It's Real all quick, Quo, how was your week? My week was fantastic, man. You know, I'm out here. I unclogged my shower drain. I'm happy as fuck. That shit finally <laughs> happened. I was so happy to do that. Been working on that for months. I'm good to go. Well, you ain't been working on it for months. You I, did it. You did, you've been neglecting it. I've been neglecting it for a minute, but his, I feel like shit. his shower was turned into a jacuzzi. It looked yeah. It was, <laughs> people normally pay extra for that, but mine was yeah. Mine was fucked up. I said, you know what? Forget it. Bought me a flexi snake. I learned what that shit was. A flexi snake. I said, sounds sounded pretty bad, right? But no, he, he called me and asked me, yo, 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 how you use this thing? I was like, listen, bro. Go ahead, YouTube that thing, man. I went through like four or five different videos, but I figured it out. I was there. Yeah, I'm good. That's cool. First line of target. How was your week, man? What's going on with you? Good week. Good working. Week. Good week. I'm, I'm on. I love hearing quiet on set. My man was in a commercial this week, right? Shout out commercial. I saw that. Shout out to Mojo, man. Mojo Socks. I appreciate the love, man. That was a good time, man. Shout nice out to my working. man John for putting it together. Yo, special episode. We got a guest in the building, man. Guest in the house tonight. Okay. Yes. Yes. We got the author of The Art of Routine. Okay. Because I, I don't understand a lot of the things you do. <laughs> there's, there's really no thought behind it. So it's so kind of cool. We, that's why we got him on the show to dig deeper. That's why he's here. <laughs> Mr. Angel Ishkovich is in the building. Thank you, Angel. Hey. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for uh, letting me come on. Anytime, you, man. Also known as Mr. Dr. I as well. Got to give him your nickname, yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. He told you he don't like that shit. He just got to tell me he like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I've been called a doctor for a lot of years as an emergency physician, so I'm all right with that. I've been called other things, too. Anyway, but yeah. No I got problem. you. I got you. I got you. I like it. Though. I'm going to jump right into it on health. Since, you know, you wrote, you wrote a book about the art of routine. How is being in a routine even helpful to us? Well, you know, it's uh, that's well, that's a good that's a good question. You have to ask yourself, well, why is it that we do things in regular manners? You know, why is it that we do all of this? And so, one of the things I did in the book is that I um, I realized that there's kind of a connection about the world we perceive and the bodies, and the regularity and the regularity and the routine of our of our um, our physiology, our endocrinology, how our bodies actually work, and. I was studying, uh, we're doing geriatric emergency departments, mm -hmm. which were specialties for older folks that came into the emergency department because we used to say, hey, you know, the children aren't just uh, little adults. We have to treat them just the right way. And older people have things that aren't just like any adult at all, you know. So what happened is, is um, that I started to study people that were over 100 years old, mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. what, they, okay. what they call centigenarians. And. I'll just tell you a little story. You guys stop me any moment. But basically, uh, the centigenarians or 100-year-olds were kind of interesting. When I noticed two things about people that are really old. One, they've got a really stable environment, both physically and where, where they live and the people around them. And two, they did things very regularly. They did things in a routine. But what they did was really different, was really varied what they did. Some would say... Well, some of the things they did weren't particularly healthy that you'd think it'd be consistent with living 100 years, you know? Right. I smoke yeah. my cigar every day at 4 o'clock. Every day at 4 o'clock, I smoke my cigar. Then on Wednesdays, I have my beef, and then I have... So what I started to notice is that people who live long lives seem to do things very regularly and on a timely fashion, but what they did was different. It varied what they did. Do you and so, oh, so I noticed that being the case, and... Uh, I thought, you know, that's the case for people who are high performers, you know, whether it's, you know, artists, athletes. And I started to think that's how we care for the young and that's how businesses go. And why is it we're that way? And that's how I started getting into the concept of both routine and the environments that we do it in. And uh, it's all been kind of pretty, uh, 
appropriate because all of our routines and lives have been disrupted quite a bit from the COVID and sort. So, well, that's for sure. Well, what you just <laughs> said, my life is over next week, probably. Because <laughs> everything I do, I try to break routines. Like, I don't like a routine. I just go with what I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Very like, I, if I feel like, like, for instance, I drove here to the studio a certain way. I'm most definitely not driving home that same way. I break all routines. This ma mainly because when I have no car, I used to take the bus. I used to go to I used to go to school on the bus. Same way every day, going and coming the same way. That feels like I'm dying. But I'm glad we got you on the show to let me know. <laughs> I might as well wrap this shit up. I'm going to that DMX fucking uh, Biggie Smalls two pop hey, concert yo. next week. <laughs> well, you <laughs> definitely need you definitely that shit gonna be lit. Pop smoke here. opening up. Yeah. <laughs> well, definitely. Okay, I guess it's a psychotherapy session now we're gonna do on you. But uh, just kidding around. But wow. you know um, what it is is that people the part of the art is what you do. You know, we're getting bombarded now with all kinds of information. Mm -hmm. We're getting distracted, disrupted. It's kind of the age of infinite distraction now. And what you choose to do, the content of what you do, that's your way. But whatever it is you decide to do, whether it's yoga, Pilates, working out on a gym, if it's exercise, or the kind of food diets you want, paleo or whatever, that's your choice. That's your art. But the way our bodies are set up, is to do things in a regular way. So all I'm saying is do it in a timely fashion and the sort. So the fact that you got to the uh, show on time, even though you went a little bit of a different way, uh -huh. that's your routine. You have a certain routine about when you do the show, how do you prepare for it. Everybody here is routined in how they're performing. That's why you've got a great show. People uh, don't realize that. I mean, when, you, when it comes down to it, it's... If, if there is a routine, it's not something I genuinely think about because I'm very much of like whatever I'm feeling is what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just as generally I don't know if it's like with an age thing that as you get older, because you just talking about the hundred year olds that have that very yeah. strict thing that they like to do. But I just find that like, you know, maybe it's living in the moment, whatever you could call it. But I don't know. Yeah, but you th Think about it. You you go to sleep anytime, any night, every night, whatever time you feel. You go to the bathroom anytime you like to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I take go, a shit every morning like at I feel like to the bathroom. I guess I'll just go to the restroom right now. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, the, you know, <laughs> you start thinking about how our body works. You know, our hearts beat really regularly, right? They're not irregular. They don't stop and go. Mm -hmm. They're circadian rhythms that our body's set up with, you know, for nighttime. There's a reason why people at 3 o'clock get sleepy and hungry. Your hypothalamus in your brain says sleep, eat, or have sex. Three o'clock about. Three o'clock, that's what your brain tells you. So what happens, the English, have, the English have tea, right? You know, that's the food part. Hey, the Spaniards go to have siestas, you know, where you got to go take some sleep. And the French and Italians and other people, you know, sometimes have a little, uh, a little sex or something in the afternoon. So oh, there are times oh, the to the French people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the afternoon <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> 3:30 baby. <laughs> but you know the point is that when I you know that. the point is that your body has these rhythms of, of I don't want to get into the whole science of cortisol and the sort but there's a reason you kind of wake up at a certain time in general. Your blood pressure is best, you're really alert. There's times of the day that you're better to do certain things and not do other things. A lot of this was learned when you were young when you're put in school you know, and trying to organize and become socialized to a certain degree. Right. But your body works within this rhythm. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of companies have asked me things like, hey, you know, for example, this may not be, this is not a bad time to have the show right now, okay? You can be alert, you can be awake, you can kind of be uh, focused a bit. It's a good time to engage. This is about the time that people end up playing sports when you're in high school and in junior high, uh -huh. you know, about Four to five is a good time also to exercise before uh, before dinner for me. You guys are a little after dinner now, but it's within that same realm. Oh. In fact, some companies have stopped even – they tell everybody, okay, I'm not going to get any work done after 3 o'clock. So guess what? Go home, and after dinner and after you exercise, at 7.30, start working again, okay? And we're going to let you do remote work. Right. So a lot of, there's a lot of regularity to how our body is and – you know, also the way we perceive the world, you know, every we the sun rises, just our perception, forget the science, the sun rises and sets regularly, right? The moon comes up, things happen. Imagine like it was in old days if the sun didn't come up, how you would be feeling today. 
So there's a lot of rhythm, a lot of regularity to our bodies and what happens in them scientifically and medically. Uh -huh. And then there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of rhythm, and that's where the body tries to seek stability. Right. This is what people are generally doing. You're trying to find a stable, even if it's a little concorded where you are, you're still in the same studio. You're still in your home, you know? So anyway, those are a little couple questions. Sorry, I got a little bit of a little crazy over there. It's so. all good. It's nice. all good. You see that passion leak out? Like, yeah. he, 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 he see yeah. that just talking about the routines and everything. No, no, no. It's because people tell me this all the time. And I had this, this uh, CEO you know, people want to think they're creative. People that are creative want to think that they're spontaneous and of the moment. When you, when you start looking at the history of great artists in the sort, they're not that way. They're much more focused on they're doing their art and how they do it. They have organization. They have more structure. Oh, he's got a good point. In, in, in the book, in the book, The Art of Routine, I, I'm not going to go into the details to let you read the book. Yeah, but you got to get the book. Mm -hmm. You got to get the book, The Art of Routine on Amazon. But anyway, uh -huh. um, I talk about the, the Rolling Stones, who you th would think, you know, are um, we interviewed them and and their choreographer, and their manager that organizes this. And you'd think that these people who are 70, 80 septuagenarians who are still out there performing have been doing it for 55 or more years that these, these folks would be pretty spontaneous and crazy and not really organized and structured, totally wrong. They have an incredible routine. In fact, because of their age, they've got to have the backstage look exactly the same wherever wherever they go. Mm. It's exactly the same. They, If not, especially when you're changing time zones and locations. You know, we know this from medicine as people get older, changing environments is hard. We also know it's hard when you're really young. Right. And so they've learned to stabilize their environment and go through a routine where when they start to get, when they get into town, when their entourage comes in, when they interview people, how Mick Jagger warms up in a very timely fashion, how much time he warms up to the time that they get on stage. So people who are high performers, even in the artistic realms, have a lot more organization and structure than they think. And that's just one of the one of the insights that I like uh, pointing out. That's true. I like that you pointed that out because with me, when I'm on stage, when I'm performing, mm -hmm. um, I damn, I really do have a routine. Even though I try to yeah, you blast music in my car. That's your routine. I've seen it. <laughs> when, yeah. I don't, when I don't feel like taking my car, yeah, he make it seem like take I ain't got no whip. Take control of the radio. But yeah, but yeah <laughs> that's what he does. Yeah, no, yeah, I got to get in my head space. It's a routine. I got to get in my head space when I get to the show. <laughs> I'm really not talkative. You know what I mean? That's true. The backstage area, I'm silent the whole time because in my head, I got to envision it happening before it actually happens. You yeah. know what I mean? But that's very uh, – when you said Mick Jagger warms up for the same amount of time – that makes perfect at the same time every time i yeah. try to time everything from the walk from the hotel down to the car wow the exactly. car ride to the venue because i want to limit my time at the venue i'm trying to peak at a certain time right so right. i don't want to get to the venue too early then i'm no no no, no. Then, then i'm peaking in the dressing room or i'm peaking as i'm walking to the stage so I, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely right. I try to get in that routine, no matter where I'm performing. That when I'm on when I'm on stage, I'm peaked. Like this is when I'm. Let's go. Yeah. So it's That's, like boom in the moment. Like you did everything uh, you had to do. You yeah, I, pre I full, completely prepared for this moment. You know, and that's and that's ex that's a good oh. learning thing because that's what you could teach others. That that's why you're. I'm trying to teach the kid. I'm trying to. Teach I mean, the kid. well, okay. <laughs> it's like I got. I guess I got some routines, but it's like I don't really. I don't have it down to a science like you do. That's that's a whole another. That's just. I, it's got to feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like for me, I can't I can't eat before I perform. That's my thing. I just can't. Nah, eat. I, I did that. I, I did that a few times, especially being on tour, because you know it's like, damn, we we not from this city. We need to eat something. Let's just get it to me. I That's the perfectly that. wrong thing to do. And then as soon as you I'm feel? done performing, then I'm hungry as hell. Boom. All right, yeah. where, where's the nearest yeah. Wendy's or something? And like you know, that. and 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 food does that not just because you're you got a lot of adrenaline going, you're energized, but you know, food how it can make you sleepy. There's something called yeah. a postprandial tide. I just you know, the, the, the way the physiology of the body then makes you get kind of a little bit sleepy. So, I mean, just to my point, because I, the reason I was being a little passionate is because people often tell me like, oh, I don't have a routine. I'm creative. I'm not. But when you start looking <laughs> into your life a little closer and how you do things, you'll find great performers, you know, like 
you know, football teams or basketball teams, they practice in a certain way. They warm up a certain way. They have superstitions, you know, like Notre Dame hitting the, hitting the, sign, the yeah. wall. Right. You know, so, and, and you might even have He never seen Rudy. He never seen yeah. Rudy. Oh, I, I know what he's talking about. Okay. Hitting the sign. Yeah, I, I seen it. It's okay. Keep going. Yeah, you okay. good. Well, I mean, if you got, if you guys have any superstitions, oh, I have you guys, I, before you perform or before you get on. Or? Oh man, superstition! I am very superstitious. He got to beat his dick every that, show. That's, crazy, <laughs> well, that's not for the show. The road, that's not for the show. When we on the road, they want to put him in the room next to <laughs> me. I don't want to hear that. That's not for the show. I don't because he's yeah, making that, the noise. I understand. Yeah, it's that like, goes that goes with his saying he wants to feel good all the time. I got okay, wait a minute, wait, you're not supposed to agree with that. Superstitious for me, it's like like my mom was always very superstitious. So there's always like a lot that I believe in. Like, all right, so there's one that I know. Like, if your if your left eye twitches, like if your left eye twitches, it's like bad luck. Or if you like your right eye twitches, it's good luck. That type of thing. I don't really know if that's a routine, but it's like things that you just keep in mind. Superstitious when it comes to like... Or you could just have something in your eye. Or, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like you <laughs> yeah, you could. A little bit of dust. Well, look, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the interesting <laughs> things is it's just like where you guys are developing, you know, routines then become like the routine of how you guys interact together here. Uh -huh. There's a routine. There's a way you know how to do it. And, and eventually those become, you know, cultures uh, become cultural. It becomes a ritual. This happens, you know, where routines that are done in a company or performers or a group or a team then become kind of a ritual, you know, like, right. like the Rolling Stones, they were like breaking the crust. They'd always have like a, a meat pie just before they get on. You really? Know? Wow. Now that doesn't go with the food thing, but that's what the, the Rolling Stones do. That's and it's the yeah. same uh, with a few people that I talk about in my book. And, and also it's when you're uh, part of this whole thing about how our body seeks stability we're adaptive. We seek routine regularity. Our lives kind of often don't go that way. That's what I call a little time bubble. You know, the bubble, I just, this is an analogy so people understand not necessarily the science, but things a little better. It's like um, the, the, the bubble is kind of like your environment that's stable but can burst anytime. And time is what you do in it. That's all routine is. It's not what you do. It's just the regularity of what you do in a stable environment. Yeah. But, you know, as our lives go, whether it's changes in business, divorce, emotional issues, um, changes in job status, our bubbles burst. OK. Mm -hmm. And they break. And we've got to go back just like what happened with COVID and recreate new routines. we got to create a new time bubble. That's how humans survive. If you look how humans have survived, um, you know, I work with Direct Relief. I've been the board chair of Direct Relief. Uh, now uh, I just finished that. That is, you know, gives humanitarian help throughout the world. And you see how refugees who have been displaced from, you know, war or how they how they have to move and how they immigrate, migrate the way many have and, and find ways to kind of find um, back against stability and a routine where they can live, where your body can actually survive. And so... Even in crisis, uh, and I talk about this in my book, and, you know, even in the worst situations that you have, there's always this hope and you're, you're looking to find stability and looking to find routine. So there's always hope because we're wired that way. We're wired to find our way to survive that's stable. Anyway. Like I know I'm getting a little I'm getting a little heavy, but the book is is a little philosophical <laughs> about that. So, no, sorry. but that's actually what I was going to talk about. It's like patterns and behavior, more or less. It's like just trying to yes. create something that we all feel comfortable with that you can kind of go ahead and move forward. But right. that brings me to my next question, though. So you've been studying this for a while. So have there any any weird any any weird routines that maybe you've seen or seen like people engage in? Now you talked about like what the Rolling Stones have done, what Mick Jagger did, but anything that kind of made you say like like really like that's something that you do? Well, you know. There's uh, one of the distinctions, this is kind of like a little bit more uh, kind of psychiatry and psychology is there's 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 habits. Right. But some habits aren't good habits. Right. Right. Habits are kind of automated behaviors, routines, things you do regularly without really thinking about them. You know, I don't know if you've ever like driven, you know, a car for a way talking to someone. All of a sudden you're down 10 or 15 miles. and You can't remember how you went from here to here. Yo, okay? that's real. That's right. Real. Yeah. Yeah. Driving you know, long so, distance. I, I do that. Yeah. You know, cause you're like maybe on the phone or talking and the sort. And so the way our, the, the way our, our brain works, certain things are good habits. Now, certain habits are not, you know, good habits because, um, 
They, they're also things that are addictive. You know, we've got an opioid crisis here in the United in the United States. Mm -hmm. Those are physiological addictions, you know, alcohol, opioids. There's a lot of and then other people are addicted to other things, you know. Um, and 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 so um, I wanted just to distinguish a little bit about that. There's something that's there, are, you know, bad habits or pathology. You know, people have certain personality types, you know, and, and certain ways of being that, that aren't necessarily normal. But. I mean, that's a that's a good question. Look, I've seen everything you could ever see in the emergency department. OK, so, Dang. you know, working in L.A. County at USC and teaching there uh, for you know a good period of time, you know, you end up seeing uh, people do some really, really, really unusual things, you know, to them. OK, to themselves. I'll, I'll, to themselves. I'm glad yeah. you said that. Let's get into it. What are some of the things you've seen working in the ER? <laughs> well, you know, I can't get I, I of course, you know, I've got HIPAA has to. We're not, no yeah, no, We're not saying I'm no just, names. We're not saying no names. No names. Keep that compliance and all. I believe in no snitching anyway. No, but but you know, well, <laughs> you know, no well, well, uh, first of all, you know, people can tend to be uh, pretty uh, cruel with each other, and I know this is a little bit off topic of routine and the sort. But the main thing that I that I for our teams as emergency physicians, and I'll tell you the, the story in a second. But you know, I, I wrote a little piece on entrepreneur how to deal with a crisis. You know, how do you how does a team take care of people? How does a group of ER docs take care of a, a problem that is uncertain? You don't even know what's coming in any moment, right? Mm -hmm. So as a team, you have to be organized. You have to be structured. You have to have a little bit of uh, a, a, a standard operating procedure. And in these different areas, cardiac disease, trauma, you know, you have to know as a team what you do together to save a life, you know? But so I wanted just to point that out because um, how you work as a team Having a good decorum and you know mutual respect is uh, is important to have that you know to have mutual respect. But you know you know one of the worst things I remember think, seeing as far as bad traumas is there was a, a linen company that some people got in a really um, bad uh, bad fight with each other. Two of the employees and the one guy you know beat the guy up and he threw him into the commercial dryer. Whoa. Okay, and then he dried, turned the dryer on, and pretty much when we when the paramedics arrived, they found somebody in a commercial dryer, <laughs> and they're calling me and saying, <laughs> "What? We can't pick this person up because all their bones are broken, and we're trying to. There is some breathing still going on, and uh, you know we proceeded to try to resuscitate that person. So." People will do what? unusual. We can't just be. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out. Time we out. Time out. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Hold up. All his bones was broken. He was in a commercial dryer. Yeah. Well, think about it. If you wow. get tumbled around in, in a bit of heat of for, uh, for a forty minutes or an hour, so people people can be cruel. And uh, there's you know there's a lot of good things. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of uh, good Oof. value that, that of people. But you're talking about the kinds of things we've we've seen. And I what I can tell you is that. That, um, you know, really in the emergency medicine, if it wasn't for alcohol uh, or, you know, alcohol and drugs and smoking, we probably wouldn't have much business. You know what I mean? There's lots of oh, lots going on that, that right. happens in that regard. So, I mean, it's a very broad scope. And, uh, you know, telling I could tell you a lot of gory stories in the sort that but but the fact is, is that the people who work and you've seen them now working in these emergency departments and taking care of people. I know where you guys are. There's been a lot of devastation uh, with COVID and a lot of the healthcare workers. These mm -hmm. people are, you know, very committed to working as a team and they have very specific routines. Their environment that they take care of you is that emergency department or that hospital. And, you know, that's the whole thing about people. If you have disease or you have trauma or you have psychiatric illness, I, I you know, I started training in psychiatry region. What is it that we do? We put you in, we stabilize you in the best cocoon we can. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, hospitals aren't hotels. Right. And then what do we do? We try to get you into a regular schedule. We give you a uh, rhythm, the right amount of food, the right amount of food at the right time, the right moments that you get medication. Everything becomes very routine and regular. And that's that's pretty much how we're how we're wired and how we get to take care of ourselves. Wow. Right. That makes that makes a lot of sense. So. Essentially, a routine routine is essential to good health. It is. 
But there are bad routines so. too, for sure. Yeah, Everybody like did. some of that shit you do. I mean, God, my shit good. I don't know what he's talking about. My yeah. routines are amazing. Look at this. Yeah. He and the yeah, Asian well, you know, women. <laughs> he and the Asian know. women. <laughs> <laughs> what that got to well, do with you know. routines, bro? What that got to do with routines? He seems well, to be know. in a routine to me. I'm trying to break you out of the habit. <laughs> I can't, man. Well, you know, sexual sexual health is important, right? There so, you go. There, Just there, not there, with yourself. With another. With a couple. Man, look. Yes. But what I will say, one thing I will say, because <laughs> he on that bullshit. One thing I will say <laughs> is I do think that there is there is such a thing as like unhealthy, like you said, unhealthy routines. But one thing me and him are always talking about is like, you know, people who kind of just choose to not go outside of the norm or people who just choose to leave it at their routine and not do more because maybe, you know, they're they're too comfortable where they're at, you know? So I feel like that's maybe the antithesis of what you're talking about, where it's like, you know, you're in a comfortable routine, but because you don't make the effort to kind of go above that, you're kind of like you're, you're flatlining at where you are in life. So hey, you're not you're not able to perform at a higher level. And what I tell people with that is fine. Burst your time bubble mm -hmm. and get do something new, get new content. But whatever it is, if you want to make it effective, get some routine, get some regularity, do it in a stable environment. OK, but change what it is you do. So, you know, if you want to have your own talk show, you know, for some reason, instead of this talk show or whatever, I'm just making this up. You know, you've got to sometimes if you've been in that comfort zone, sometimes to improve yourself, to get better at what you do, to, to live a better life. You make a break. You break your time bubble and you go out and develop a new routine. And that makes for good and higher performance. You know, the high performers are always trying to improve. Yes. You know, um, their practice their approaches, um, their, their equipment, their ability to do it. And, and sometimes people, you know, people change sports. You know, I, I just met a friend that, um, that, uh, his daughter was just a great tennis player, you know, as, and, and recently to try to improve her life because she ended up not being a full professional tennis player. She went and changed to pickleball. I don't know if you guys have heard about pickleball. Pickle ball. I played that. No, I played that in uh, high school. That's the real thing. That sounds like yeah. something you would play. Pickleball. Yeah, I played that shit. Yeah, it's actually I a good game. That's a, I, I, you I know what? Believe. You're the first person I know that's played pickleball. I played that You know anyway, why? Because he's it. lying. He just no, wants to I, get on. He just wants to agree with you. No, what? I'm gonna be honest with Whoa. you. Whoa! Get the get the paddle right now. Like, I'll play. You got to be careful with him. He also sells weed see, and shit. On he the also side. goes to McDonald's and orders Big Macs and don't tell you shit because he says he's healthy. Okay. Well, go ahead. Well, I'm gonna be, and, and, <laughs> can, can I be transparent with you, Dr. Angel? <laughs> Dr. Sure. I. His name is Dr. I. I know, but I remix. I call him Dr. I. Because okay. he don't like yeah. that Dr. I shit. <laughs> he didn't say that. You say Dr. First <laughs> name. Boom, that. boom. Put my swag on it. He, and he wants to rat. He's a, he's, he's a snitch. <laughs> he ain't that I went to McDonald's, ordered a Big Mac. You know, I'm trying to slim down. It's a bad routine, shit. bro. It's a bad routine. It wasn't a routine. It was one time I was fucking with wax. I was off the wax. <laughs> you know the story. I ordered me. two Big Macs. You Fuck it. I had a taste in my mouth. Yeah. Now, he now go that's tell transparency. Now he go tell the two story. Two Big Macs <laughs> and the two strawberry cream pies, but they put one in the bag. I'm still <laughs> living over that shit. <laughs> Are you the strawberry cream pot too? Yeah, she was this, good. I wanted to get, I ordered two, paid for two, gave me one. Oh, still salty. They're lucky I live around there. Probably got the receipt. But, um, cost too. Angel, yeah. I mean, the, what would inspire you to write a book about routines? Because that's a different type of thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, you know, I didn't, I, here's the thing. Everybody wants me to be like prescriptive, you know, like mm -hmm. as a doctor, you know, you go and they write a prescription for yeah. you, right? You know, you know, so basically um, I just was writing a book that was more of an insight and kind of a, on my part, more of an observation about how people's behavior. It's not, it's nothing like, it's not the, the perfect piece of the world. But what I, what I noticed is that in this world, there's so many people that come up to me and says, you know, I can't get it together. I can't get my life together. I can't get working or I just lost my job from COVID. I've got some rent due. I've got issues. Um, and and so as a caregiver, you know, I started to think, well, you know, people want like the one, two, three, you know, which I have a little hard time with sometimes, honestly, because things are complex. They're not so simple that you can give somebody the one. You know, people, as somebody once told me, they just you want to sell stuff, just tell them. They, they just want to know how you're going to be pretty, skinny, healthy, wealthy. Tell me how to yep. be pretty, skinny, That's healthy, it. wealthy. 
And if you tell them that, they'll you'll sell your book in the sort, okay? But what inspired <laughs> so go ahead, me tell them that shit. So we we try to sell a book for you, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So what's going to make me pretty healthy, wealthy, skinny? But I think part of it is is that in this today, there's so much digital world. Think about, you know, the iPhones we're on or the the, the cell phones we're on. Everything that's interrupting us that we can't get any rhythm, we can't get any momentum, we can't get any because we're right away distracted to something else. Like hey. Don't eat those. Don't eat those McDonald's burgers. Go over to Burger King. They're better, you know. And now you got a commercial <laughs> walking you that way. I'm just kidding around. Ooh, but, swap a do smack different, Doctor. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, to okay, you. well, I knew that might get you. There. Wait till the shit is over. I'm gonna have a little fun with that. <laughs> shit, good old but man. my point is, you're being distracted all the time that you can't get into um, a, a rhythm or regularity. And people are also changing often their environments. They're not doing things, and you know people recently told me, he says, I can't get anything together. I can't get to sleep on time. I can't um, get, I used to exercise regularly and I can't exercise regularly. And uh, so people say, what's the prescription? Can you give me one thing to do? And, and I tell them, you know, it's really hard. You know, you got to you know what you do. But sometimes people push me and I said, they said, I, I can't get do anything regularly. I said, get a dog. Okay, mm -hmm. get a dog. Oh. You're going to start getting regularity. Okay. Because that dog's going to have to poop at the right time. The dog's <laughs> going to have to, uh, you're going to have to feed it at the right time. And it's going to get you, help you get in a routine. Because routine and regularity begets regularity. And you become more and more into that mode. We adapt into that mode. And um, and I remember, you know, some some stories of a, this insurance salesman told me how he turned his life around. Yeah, yeah um, that's why I got to get turned my life you around. Know, you know, you know, and, and yeah, they, they <laughs> turned his they life around. Like, what? He, told, he turned his life around because he he, he he got divorced, he lost his kid, he lost his job, and he was struggling on what to do. And one day he went over to the gym to try to just start at, you know, six in the morning or seven to get some exercise, which is usually the body's good time to get exercise. And, um, he met an older guy that was really structured and organized, and he was working out. And he started befriending him, became friends with him. And the guy became friends and a mentor, and he got him back into this exercise routine, which got him into a sleep routine, which got him into his eating better routine. And his life oh, started to okay. come back together, was able to you know, get a job, and said that was kind of what got me going because I'd ask people, you know, what got you going. So anyway, just a little bit of, of those uh, those those kind of stories. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You mentioned this, too, actually, in the book, and you actually talked about this a little already, what you call a time bubble. Now, yeah. just to kind of give a little bit of insight into that to people who may be listening. Just want to, want to know a little bit more what you mean when you say that. Can you delve yeah. into a little delve into that a little yeah. bit? So so the thing about it that I was uh, when I was telling you about some of the older folks and then high performers is what I noticed was that it wasn't just the routine, not that they just did things the same day, the same time, every day regularly, but that they needed a stable environment. So routine is about time, regularity and time. And the bubble, I was trying to make an analogy about the environment that you're in, the stability of the environment. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of flex, but you're in this kind of stable piece. And, uh, you know, I kind of, and you know, when you start looking at how, we live not just our homes, but even when we travel, you know, there's something I call a traveling time bubble. You know, some of the great athletes that have to travel and people that travel and are high performers, they create a little bubble of how to perform, you know, whether it's like in tennis, Roger Federer, or a lot of these basketball players that are traveling, they've got quite the routine and quite the regularity. They've got their own little time bubble because they're changing time zones, they're changing environments in the sort right there's kind of a reason why there's a home court advantage you know in sports also uh, why home court advantage seems to be important in almost any sport because you're familiar with that environment Routier. so the time bubble is it is 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 your kind of your environment your stability that you have and um and the routine is time that's what that is oh interesting that's interesting you say that yeah, would, yeah. switching gears a bit why is social media checking your likes compared to, let's say, alcohol? Well, you know, it's not too different. There's an addictive quality that's been pretty well proven, right? Um, and, um, you know, it's, so it's been pretty well proven now that uh, people have, you know, social media addictions. 
You know, I was just talking to a friend of mine. He says, I don't know what to tell my wife. I can't get her off Facebook. I can't get her off Instagram. Wow, um, she's she's um, It's her way. So one of the things I just wrote a little something about was uh, about how that made it worse. Uh, people needing to connect, needing to be feel connected, you know, like on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Need, it's been this whole COVID environment where we haven't been able to socialize and see each other. Right. And uh, there's this term called the fear of missing out. Oh, it's that's that FOMO. FOMO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FOMO. Yeah, FOMO. Everybody knows okay. that. Yeah, so you guys heard of FOMO. And and um, that's kind of a natural kind of social phenomena uh, where, you know, people are worried that they're not getting the most out of it. Well, social media has kind of expanded that because, you know, you end up seeing, you know, people show you these photos of all these great places they're at. You know, you're sitting at home in your couch, right, or whatever, you know, or these mm-hmm. things are doing – and that's in, now what's happened is that um, it's that that quality of getting onto the um, social media platforms has become more intense than before because many people are, are at home. They have more time. They have more freedom and they want to feel more connected because humans are convivial. Humans want to connect, touch, hug each other, you know, and you're, you, you've seen, you know, it, as I've you know, this this is not a good experiment. That we've had over here trying to keep people away from each other you've seen yeah, what happens uh, you know you keep people away from working. each other you get you get social disobedience you get violence you know these things are part of you just can look back at history when this kind of thing happens so um there there's this addictive quality already that's been there to social media feeling connected that now from sort of bit fomo has been made even worse as if you're missing out you're not connected and right. it's made a lot of the social media connections. Uh, and they've done, they've done some studies in psychology that I was reading. But I, wrote, I did write a little article um, that they were going to post a little bit about FOMO in that regard. So is alcohol any different? No, not, partic- not particularly. Um, you know, so I don't, it, it, you know, what do you, what is it that you, out, you know, what is it that you outlaw? You know, so. Um, I don't know. So I feel like that. that- that social media FOMO is never going to go away because people already have that. Like, like you said, social media enhances it. But I feel like a little bit of FOMO is good every now and then, you know, because uh, it, it, this is looking at it from a different point of view. But like, let's say me as a comedian, right? If I see a lot of other comedians out there working, doing their thing, I'm going to be like, OK, I got to step my game up. You know, I got to get on that level, get to be where they're at, doing what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So right. I call it. So taking you're trying, a positive to, you're trying to compete for attention, you know, and that's one of the things here we are on the show. And we're all trying to raise our hands saying, hey, hear me, hear me. Hey, hear me. You know, there's like 330,000 podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how many doctors there are, you know, and I just did this because, you know, basically I've, I've been involved in, you know, philanthropy, medicine, emergency medicine. I saw this insight that I think we're being disrupted and we've got to put some stuff away. You know, in the book, I, in the book, The Art of Routine, I talk a little bit about one of the CEOs that I work with, large multi-billion dollar company. And, you know, every day his routine was at 345 when he was in the office and not traveling, which happened in in, in also routine fashions. He would tell everybody to leave. He'd shut down all the phones. He'd get rid of everything and and just sit there without any noise and basically contemplate and ponder. Maybe some big decision, getting rid of all this noise all around us. Yeah, all that clutter. I like yeah, that clutter. getting rid like of the all the clutter and just sitting for a moment. If you think about all our lives, most of us just are not spending any time thinking at all or, or just even with a little bit of quiet time. You know, mm-hmm. um, I kind of recommend that as when you talk about a prescription, I recommend that when I talk to like CEOs or chairmen, so get a little bit of time when you have people in your ear, a phone in your ear, or people bugging you, especially when you need to make some strong decisions. You need to just. You have important decisions to ponder and do that, but do it regularly. Don't do it just once in a while. Get that to be part of your habit. Another thing that I um, I like to talk about in this regard uh, to uh, it's it's a little different because anyway, that's a way of getting away from social media. Right. I, I, I didn't right, want right. to get away. I didn't want to. I don't want to try to uh, uh, tell you some other prescriptive ideas other than getting a dog and doing it regularly and having time alone, a little bit of time alone that you need regularly to, to ponder. You know, a lot of people have gone to meditation, 
you know, that's a real popular piece now to do meditation. But meditation is a little complex. I try to yeah. meditate, but I can't stop thinking about pizza. That shit don't work out for me. Man. Hey, that's, that's kind of meditation. Because well, they you say know, you're supposed to clear your thoughts, but I can't stop thinking about that, well, that pizza. I understand. You know, what, what we do with, with, you know, we have some we have some dogs in our house and uh, oh. we're involved a little bit. And in, I've gotten into the little show dog world a little bit because when you're too old to compete, you got to get your animals to do it for you, you know. So I, uh, I, you know, but hey, when the dogs are eating the socks or something, you just put something that doesn't taste good. It's very simple psychology, something aversive. And they're going to bite that one time or two times and then we're going to eat it. So I can get you some of that stuff for pizza if you want. I don't know. Yeah, he's going to get you some socks for your pizza. There you go. <laughs> That's what uh, it's all about. Dr. Angel, <laughs> I want to thank you so much. Real quick, tell them where they could get the book. Yeah, sure. The Art of Routine is uh, on Amazon. Right now, it's on Barnes and Noble, and uh, you can just hook up over there. It's uh, it, the book actually hasn't come out; it's coming out on March fifteenth. You know, so this is a little pre uh, pre to the book, and I I hope that it's uh, Wait, it's you a said, book you said March yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. Uh, look, 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 respectfully, Doctor Ahel is out there in L.A. Weed is legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, March fifteenth was last month. I let him rock. You said March fifteenth. I, I said, wait rock. a minute. I know, I know, I know when good weed is being consumed. What year is it, real quick? <laughs> I got weed out there. <laughs> well, that's nice of you guys. Anyway, I know I really appreciate it. Really enjoyed it, and I, I hope I brought a little bit of insight to your yes, people. Of course, to you. Of course. I know we talked about a lot of subjects, but the art of routine will be coming out on May fifteenth, and uh, May fifteenth. Okay, all right, respect. Yeah, May fifteenth, yeah. And so I hope you guys enjoy it. It'll be a, it's a little bit of an insight, and uh, you know I'm glad to join you guys anytime and. We could talk about a more specific topic if you want, you know, like diet or exercise or food or whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm all, all up for it. I really enjoyed it. I got you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Dr. I, thank you again. Dr. Thank Dr. Angel Inchkovich, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, so cra a lot of crazy things happened this week. A lot of stuff. First and on. foremost, before we move on, DMX. Rest in peace. Rest DMX. in peace to the legend. Absolute legend, man. Crazy to see him go like that. It's crazy to see the dog go like that, but the dog was on Drink Champs and he said, hey, I lived a good life. He was content with everything. A lot did. of people couldn't live the career that the dog had. Not at all, man. Especially His first two albums in the same year, platinum. Just like that. Multi-platinum. The first, like the first two albums, you don't even hear it. At. You don't. It's you not a thing that? people do. And then when you hear, it, man, look, even with me, I'm coming from the younger side of things uh, too. DMX, man, everybody was trying to get that bark down. Everybody was trying to, that, 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 uh, yeah, that art he was doing. Everybody was trying to do that. He really thought he was a dog. He was, though. <laughs> he, I was the, but he was. He was everybody's dog, man. Yo, so I, I seen see DMX perform two times. First time Apollo Theater. You it, saw him at the Apollo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it was him and Eve. My mom's took me to the concert because she was an Eve fan. Wow. It was it was him and Eve. Yeah, just him and Eve. That was it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy packed. I never seen Apollo like that. Like I, it was, I know it was a couple. Oh, it. Wow. It was a couple hammers in the building, if you know what I mean. He's bringing them all but out. I don't believe in snitching. So what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, to be able to feel that energy, yeah, firsthand, and it's like. It was real. Undoubted. And by it was real mean like, you know, a lot of people sell records, but they can't sell tickets. It was real. You now, uh, fast forward, I, I went to go see the Rough Riders Cash Money Tour. Right. Yeah. That was yeah. Rough Riders, Eve, Drag On, shout out to Drag, um, DMX, obviously, Swiss Beats. I was at, The Locks was on that. What, would the, what was the tours like in person? I'm, I'm, I'm about to get into it if you let me touch it. And then it was Cash Money also on the tour. Right. On the tour it was, uh, you know, Lil Wayne, Baby, you know, Birdman, um, Juvenile, Turk, BG. Yo, that was, the, the, and I mean, Cash Money, they came to the stage in the helicopter. <laughs> oh, shit. Because it's the arenas vibe. now. Yo, different vibe. to feel that energy. And it's like, yo. 20,000 people not only sung every single word to every DMX song that was performed. Right. 20,000 people barked. 
<laughs> on command. <laughs> yes, because we in arenas, yo, they barked. We partied, and at the end, we prayed. I've never seen an artist do that. You prayed at the end, too? Yes. Wow. That's the dog. Wow. A lot of artists can't can't even attempt that. So I, that's wow, why I want to shed light on how special DMX was. There can never be anyone to do what he did. You know how they say the whole cliche, there'll never be another DMX? Yeah. Obviously. But, but what I'm saying is no one could ever do that again. They can't follow what he was doing. Nah. First off. You can't bark like that. Mm -mm. Soon as you like, so so the next dude gonna have what? He gonna be a cat? Yeah, what's he gonna do? Moo meow shit like that? Nah, it ain't that's the same. not gonna work. It's not the same. Not bro. gonna work. Your favorite DMX song? Get at me, dog. Yeah, you niggas wanna be killers? Get at me, dog. <laughs> I love <laughs> what the deal. <laughs> X gonna give it to you was my shit. Okay. I okay, love that shit, man. Okay. I didn't even know who X was. I'm like, that motherfucker gonna give it to me. I don't know what the fuck that means, yo. I was happy with that shit, man. That was crazy. Yo, I also didn't like the New York Post. Very disrespect. I, I believe it was the New York Post. Right. Oh, I already know you're talking when about. When they yep. did the... The side-by-side. -side, Prince Philip and very DMX. Very disrespectful. What'd they say? The Prince and the Rapper? It was, I didn't like right, that shit. That, very disrespectful. Yeah, but just simply because... We didn't care about the prince. It was the dog that passed. Yeah, but at the same time, I thought they were doing some like angel and demon type thing. That's, with that. Yeah, that's what I, I didn't I like that, that shit. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. It's like just the, the, the context of it. I'm like, what are you trying to say? It's like, yeah. all right, we, we lost two lives here. The dog was not just a rapper. He wasn't just a He was a phenomenon. They were both cultural phenomenons in their own respect. But it's like you got this and you got that. I ain't like that, yo. It's what was his name? Prince what? Philip, I think. Prince Philip ain't yeah. never performed in front of a hundred thousand people. <laughs> Prince Philip never had motherfuckers bark. <laughs> so it's different, bro. It's different. It's all never, I'm to never, say. never seen that. Never seen that. Also, then you know this, this. This what's going on in the news? Yeah. Paul Pierce. They, he has, oh, they got him. They got him right. They got him. Here. They got him. Up they got him. Up <laughs> Sometimes you gotta get a person up out of here. I got so much respect for what he did. Yo, I respect it. He, he said no, no context, no pretext. No, he just man. went live and bitches and thongs. Yo, Bro, that's my energy. I didn't even know he was on the ground. I didn't even know he was on the ground. He was smoking weed all that. Blunts in his mouth, bitches in the background. Ooh. Yo, Disney ESPN he was like, thought, yo, I didn't know if that was Paul Pierce or Tory Lanez live. Yo. <laughs> I didn't know who it was. It was Paul Pierce. But live. you know what he did say though. What he said after everything went down, he was like, "Get ready, cause I got something. I got something coming next." Niggas always say they ain't got that. Niggas always say they got something coming, but they don't. <laughs> Get ready, I got something coming. What you got? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I got respectful. I ain't mad he did that. What if what he had going on was another party, more bitches, more, <laughs> more <laughs> weed? Okay. Like two of the same party, that shit, yeah. same bitches come back and everything. Yeah, well, I got, that's what I would do. <laughs> Man, if you look, fire me for doing something, I already did it. I'm going out with a bang. Well, I just well do it again. Now I'm bringing, <laughs> now I'm bringing more chicks, more weed. I'm going even way worse than I did the last call, time. I'm gonna call my 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 man. So he's gonna bring the cocaine. <laughs> he's gonna really do it. I'm fired. Yeah, I'm doing it all, man. But they didn't even do it immediately. They waited a couple of days and they did. Oh, they waited a couple of days. They waited a couple of days. It was like all oh, after like day four. Everybody was like, "Whoa, so ESPN cool with this?" And because he went, went too active. viral, bro. I like. I love. I love that dog. But you know what? What? Paul Pierce has the last laugh. If if Paul is Welly, <laughs> make it a personal. You can statement. win. Make it a personal statement. All you gotta do here, if you close a deal with Fox Sports and you go over there with Shannon Sharp. And Ooh. Skip Bayless. You Ooh. win. You win. <laughs> Wherever he goes next, they following him. People just want to see what Paul Pierce is about to do next. So you can Not you really because it's just Paul Pierce, but ESPN's competition is Fox Sports. That's true. They I, I, yo, Fox Sports got a dope show. No, Shannon Sharp Shannon But if in the they morning. bring Paul Pierce in. <laughs> for the culture. <laughs> I got to get Paul Pierce some of that who's wax. Yeah. Paul, it's what he hit <laughs> he me. Paul is I'm going to get you. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I can't, bro. I swear to God. It's like. And we got the lemonade <laughs> to go alongside it. Paul, get, <laughs> get next to me. 
I got you, you. If he, real talk. And we got the lemonade. <laughs> you got the lemonade. <laughs> Who's wax? Yo, Paul, I got you. If you close that Fox Sports deal. If he goes to Fox Sports, it's done. I don't care, man. People ain't watching. See, you said something. You said it's just Paul Pierce. It was just Paul Pierce. Now, now it's Paul Pierce. It's, it's a different It's, it's a different ball game now. Yeah, if he I could close this people. out. Paul, I don't know who your agent is. I don't know if you were CAA. If you aren't. Get with them. Watch his next move be like Good Morning America. He got to explain. He got to explain to the people. He got to explain to the people what went down. Like Paul, what, I need some. I need that Gail King interview. Where, where, that's what I need. I need that. I need that. I need that same energy. What he did was perfect. <laughs> now, what, what if he wasn't smoking weed? He was just smoking a black and mild. What if? What, what's wrong with smoking weed? It's just legal now. It's legal. legal. You're right. He, 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 could, he was having a good time. He wasn't hurting nobody. He hurt nobody. He was hurting nobody. It was good Good female energy in yeah. the room. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't see anything in that live stream, and I did tune into the live stream after the fact. I, oh, you were? <laughs> oh, it's still up. You can go find that. Uh, and they ain't take it down. Well, okay, like send that. it to your boy then, man. I'm here. <laughs> he said send it to you. Yo, this <laughs> Welly's World Podcast. I'm Welly Jackson. It's Al Quo. At the status quo on Instagram, you know where I'm at. Make sure you like, subscribe, drop a comment on YouTube. Great review as well. Welly's World Podcast. We out of here. Take it easy, y'all. We out. Peace. Ducky out.